Okay. <sighs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. <sighs> it's three o'clock <sighs> and I'm calling the meeting to order with the change with no changes to the agenda. <sighs> um which means <laughs> the next thing on the agenda. First of all, I do want to say welcome, Rocky, to the commission. <laughs> Great to have you here. Good welcome. to be here. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Great. Um, I don't think I've ever met you, but I'm but I'm meeting you now. So mm -hmm. can you do you want to just sort of introduce yourself and, and tell us what it is you're um, interested in for sure. joining? Hi, my name is Rocky Fox. I'm a native of Nantucket. Um, I have been a volunteer for multiple organizations. I just got off my term on the school committee. <clears throat> I'm a member of um, PASCON. I have a client at the Island Home. I've been a Meals on Wheels volunteer for 25 years. I've been a volunteer at the elementary school for 25 years. I've been on the student council of the elementary school, middle school, high school, UMass Amherst, and soon to be Bridgewater State. Um, five years ago, my wife suffered a stroke. Um, so that's why I have always been involved with um elderly and handicapped but this was more came more apparent that i needed to be a bit more involved so she's home now she doesn't work she has some paralysis on her left side um she can bathe herself um, feed herself but she can't work as a mental capacity sometimes that results the stroke um is sometimes there sometimes it's not but she knows when she's mad at me that's much i do know <laughs> so, i can't believe that's too often rocky Oh, well, I'm making a lot of amends to my wife these days, let me tell you, but uh, it's all worth it. And I just wanted to be involved. And once I got up to school committee, I didn't want to. I'm also. Um, I'm on this commission, but I'm also on the uh, Elder Affairs Commission as well. I was appointed <laughs> to that one. And so I have the time, the energy, and I think I have the voice to be the, the squeaky spoke of these speakers. That's it in a nutshell. Great. Well, that's an impressive resume. Um, we 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 appreciate your your joining us. Um, hopefully, we can all um, accomplish good things together. Great. So I'm going to continue on the agenda, which the next is item is to elect officers. <clears throat> so we'll need. Do you have to read the script? Oh, I should read the script. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to abbreviate this a little bit. Um, yeah, I was going to say, can we just, you know, wave it and say we've heard it? I guess Rocky hasn't heard it, so. Okay, <laughs> well, I'm sure he knows what it is. So. The script? Yes. <laughs> we've all heard it. I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. So, and I'm sure Rocky's heard it on the school committee, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we all heard it in many places. So, obviously, this is a Zoom meeting. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just confirm who's here. So I'm going to go through the um, uh, member list. Um, Mary Beth? Here. Uh, Augie? Here. Rocky? Here. Jeanette? Here. And Georgia? Here. And our facilitator, Brenda McDonough? Yeah. OK. Um, <clears throat> and that's, that's all we've got attending at the moment. Um, so this is this open meeting of the Nantucket Commission on Disability is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023. Uh, ensuring, ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This me meeting will not per feature public comment. Um, we're convening by video, <clears throat> video conference via Zoom app. Um, note that the meeting is being recorded, and um, I think I think that's all I need to say. There's, there's a lot more here, but I'm not going to say it. Okay, so <laughs> oh, finally, each vote taken will be done will be taken by a roll call vote. So that's out of the way. Next thing to do is to elect the cha uh, chairman, vice chairman, and the secretary. So. We'll start with the chairman and I'll accept any nominations for the chair. I nominate Mickey. I second that. I was ready for that one. Um, <laughs> uh, are there any other nominations? <clears throat> Who seconded uh, that, please? Georgia. Georgia did. 
Okay, so all in favor of um, Mickey Rowland as the chair, um, I'll do the roll call. Um, Mary Beth? Aye. Augie? Aye. Rocky? Aye. Jeanette? Aye. And Georgia? Aye. And I'll go with an aye also. <clears throat> so <laughs> next we need vice chair. Um, <clears throat> any, any nominations for vice chair? Any volunteers for vice chair? Who is that now? George, yeah. right. uh, I am? OK. <laughs> I think you are. OK, I, I haven't done it. I had to do it, I don't think. Have I? I don't think so. Not likely. Um, Anybody want to listen? How about if I nominate Mary Beth? Sure. Second. Okay. Great. Okay. I feel so important. Uh, <laughs> you are. Does the crowd okay. come with it? <laughs> so all those in favor of Mary Beth, and I'll start with Augie. Aye. Rocky. Aye. Jeanette. Aye. Georgia. Aye. And Mary Beth. Aye. And I'm an I also. Thank you, Mary Beth. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mary you. Beth. Who seconded that motion? Who seconded that? Jeanette? I don't know. I pro yes, probably. Good. I'll Sounds take good. credit. All right. Take credit. Or, or blame. It was you. It was you. Yes. All right. And then for secretary, which almost never comes up, but I suppose we need a secretary. Anybody want to do that? No, thank you. As long as there's no real work involved, I'll do that. Perfect. Okay. Or Augie could do that. No, I'm gonna. Well, no. Okay. Augie, you interested, Augie? In what? The secretary. Secretary. secretary? Maybe not. Maybe the secretary's not. responsibilities is um, if I'm not available to take the minutes, Augie, you'd be taking the minutes. <laughs> I don't think that. What do you think, Augs? Probably not, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, probably not. That's fine. So we've got Georgia as a volunteer. So I'm going to nominate yeah, Georgia. Yeah. Okay. And then we need a second. Second. Uh, second. <laughs> okay. We got a second. All those in favor? Mary Beth. Aye. Augie. Aye. Rocky. Aye. Jeanette. Aye. Georgia. Aye. And I'm an aye also. So that's the that's the officer slate. We're good. Public comment. Um, there's no one really here from the public. So unless anybody here has anything to say that's not on the agenda, we could do that now. Um, Nothing that's not on the agenda. OK. Pretty full agenda. Yeah. So <clears throat> next one is approve open session minutes of May 17th, 23. <laughs> um and observe um, a move approval okay all those in favor um mary beth aye augie aye rocky aye jeanette aye and georgia aye and i'm an aye all right next is new business <clears throat> Um, all right, so review and discuss the commission's new description and bylaws. So we've gotten a, I don't have it in front of me. You know, Brenda, do you have this in front of you? I, I, have, I have a hard copy, is that what you're asking for? Um, let's start, let's go with the new description. Um, did you all receive this probably from Brenda at some point? Yeah. Yes. And you know what? I've got it here. It's on Monday's email, Mickey. Okay. Um, definition. Commission on Disabilities yeah. definition. So I'm gonna read this is a this is um I'm not sure what prompted this, but I like it. Um this Mary Beth and Augie suggested I like that edits to the um description. So I'll read that just to get it in the record. Um, the Nantucket Commission on Disability provides guidance, assistance, and advocacy to support the needs and, and interests of all people with disabilities living on or visiting the island. Given Nantucket's designation as a National Historic Landmark, a significant <clears throat> aspect of the Commission's work involves serving 
is a dedicated and robust voice for the disabled community in navigating the ba balance between historic preservation and the mission that we strive to achieve, which is access for all. So, well, go ahead. I'll just I'll just jump in because and, and when that happened, that was like a bit ago, <clears throat> right, Brenda? When I sent that to you, um, and just what I opened yesterday, I wasn't able to print out. But um, when you were discussing, you know, we need to, you know, change the definition, the mission, et cetera. And I kind of like sat and thought about it for a while and read what the existing definition is. And um, I kind of thought back to, we lived in Scottsdale, Arizona for six years, which is, I can't even imagine a more accessible place for disabled people. I don't know if anyone's ever been to Scottsdale um, or Phoenix, et cetera, but just anything you could need in terms of mobility, um, you know, all on one floor, 3 million parking spots, just everything, right, Uggs? Everything handicap accessible, everything yeah. in his school. And then <clears throat> when I really dwelled on it longer, Scottsdale basically was um, incorporated in like 1950. Um, it was sort of like whacked up starting in like the 70s, you know, up to the 90s. It's new. Uh -huh. um, and that's great. Um, but this is a whole different situation. And when I actually went to see if Scottsdale, Arizona had an equivalent to the Nantucket <clears throat> on disability, I mean, they really don't, not in terms of mobility issues and access um, and access to all. Um, the whole ball of wax with them is more along the lines of um, discrimination and employment, um, healthcare access, et cetera, because mobility is not simply not an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't have to be an issue with a place that was, you know, built um, right. not that long ago. Um, here, it's a whole different thing. And I don't hear about people having, you know, issues with employment discrimination or access to healthcare, what they need. And that's a good thing that either people have the resources or access to find the resources. So to me, the whole thing is kind of taking this old, you know, cherished historical place um, and not making it in such a way that, you know, um, it loses its beauty or its mystique or its magic, um, but at the same time makes it accessible so that other people such as my son here can enjoy the beauty and the mystique and the magic. Um, so it has to be subtle um, and done in an aesthetically pleasing way, which can be tricky, which is, I guess, what we spend our time during these meetings mm -hmm. discussing. So that's where those words um, came from. I think they're good words. And I think it's, it's really an appropriate addition to the, to the definition because yeah. most of what we do we're, yes. we're constantly balancing those two issues, right. you know, access exactly. and historic, you know, sort of preservation. So it's, yep. it's we we kind of know that we take it for granted to some degree. But if somebody's coming here and they see that, and read that, they'll kind of get maybe some of the reasoning behind a lot of our decisions. So I think it's a great addition. I think, I think so it's too. a good decision, a good a good description. So um, yeah, yeah. I think maybe we should um. Is there any other discussion about this? I have a question. <clears throat> doesn't uh, um doesn't the ADA trump the historical part of Nantucket? I mean, shouldn't it be um shouldn't that come before how pretty it is on Main Street? It's a good question, Rocky. And I and to the, for the yeah. most part, I think the answer is yes. Um, I think there are always exceptions. And we we tend to try not to um, look at it perfectly rigidly. You know, if you look at our curb cuts and our crosswalks, I mean, clearly many of them don't meet the you know AAB guidelines in terms of slope. But we you know we make it work. And if we if we had everything meet the guidelines perfectly, it would mean it would mean some pretty big alterations in the in the streetscape downtown. So I think we've kind of accepted some of those um, adjustments. And, um, but I think, um, I'm not sure where else, 
it would be an issue, um, you know, a, a conflict really. Um, you know, a lot of what we do is is to um, look at businesses that are um, seeking variances from the from the AAB right. guidelines to get access right. to their building, and we we do take into account in many of those cases that the HTC doesn't want to see ramps across the front of buildings downtown and um, major alterations to historic buildings. So that does also play into some of our decision making in terms of variances. And I think we're, our decisions are somewhat reinforced up in Boston because they usually agree with us and they're the ones that are actually making the choices, the decisions we're just recommending. Yeah, so, well, you think you're saying how Scottsdale in Arizona has like a new city, right? And you just reference Boston. That's a pretty old place, right? Mm -hmm. Boston in Nantucket. So mm -hmm. if they're if you're getting the, the yeah, let's do that in Boston. I'm sure that um, you get it down here. I'm not looking to make waves. I'm just just yeah. trying to catch up as fast as I can. No, it's I a, think good I think he's, I think he's right on in that you know is our the whole thing that I feel like we do is a constant balance between balancing out you know, the historical importance of the town as and the um, accessibility for everybody to be able to access whatever possible. There are places that are not going to be accessible and that's just the way it is. Right. Um, there are restaurants, we just can't make it accessible unless, you know, we'd have to do radical things. So, but I think that's what we end up doing is a great deal of working it out. And I think we, air on the end of accessibility over historic preservation. Although we're all pro preservation, but I think we I think we've aired more if if you call it an error on the accessibility issue. That's my feeling about what we do, and why it's important to me. Mm -hmm. I would I would say that's true. Yeah I I, I think so too. Um, and as Augie is certainly one of the only people that I ever see, you know, in a power wheelchair. And this guy's out. <laughs> this guy's out a lot. Yeah. Um, and he's been involved with some of the decisions with some of the places that he likes to go and socialize yeah. in and, and yeah. such. And so you you speak up, Mr. How, what do you do you feel that, you know, a pretty good job is being done in terms of your being able to make your way around and around town in particular. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think so. Yeah. Well, the places I've been able to go has been working out fine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, um, so Rocky, so what happens too is like, say if a business <laughs> is going to need the renovation, um, it, it's open to the public and um, then they trigger the code that they have to provide access. So they do the, they, the architect, it's usually Matt McEachern these days, who's really awesome. He usually presents to us, he looks at his projects from accessibility on down. How can I make this building accessible? And sometimes it can't be completely accessible, say like all the entrances can't be accessible or whatever, and they have to apply for a variance and they have to prove to us that they cannot provide that access. And so, um, yeah, and so let's just say the downtown sidewalks, they're a mess where we know the town, this is a big job for the town and they're gonna to try to provide access. Mickey's gonna talk about this later. But I think what we do, and I've been with the commission since 1999, is that we always look at access first, you know? And we then we understand that there's like, say like some of the places downtown just can't, like the Pearl, the Pearl puts a, um, a lift behind the building to access it because you can't make that front door accessible. You know, the ramp would be like 55 feet on the sidewalk. So those kind of exceptions are made. But I think everything that we do, we look at access, but we understand like, like one of the things we're gonna be looking at is the curb cuts mm -hmm. for some of the crosswalks. Well, the sidewalks aren't all that deep for um, for a beautiful curb cut like that we want to say like on Orange Street, but we're gonna to try to do the very best that we can to get that curb cut in because something is better than nothing, you know? Um, but I think that we do try to like access is like on the front burner of everything that we do do. And um, just because of the historic nature of this town, we have to like, you know, sometimes like don't get complete compliance, but the best compliance. Yeah. If could I ask, sense. could I ask, and, and I've never met you in person, but Rocky, hi, have, has your experience been different or what, what has your experience been? 
No, I, I'm just like I, I'm just thinking out loud um, about accessibility, um, and I I think about someone like Augie, but I also think someone like my wife who walks with a cane, who has when she walks uneven ground, yeah, right? or, yeah, or pop, will we'll, we'll throw her off. Like she, yes, for example, yesterday I'm getting a shed in my backyard, so she had to walk to that shed, which is probably about fifty feet, but in my backyard it's not even. When right. after she get to walking on that, she was in pain for two hours after that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, definitely. And in that way, th this this guy has um, a whole suspension system in his chair. So yeah. your wife is in a much more perilous situation. And it, and it bums her out that she can't go to some of these places. You right. Know what I mean? Because she doesn't want to, but she gets tuckered just gaining entry into the place. Right. Yeah. She takes it down to eat a meal. Yeah. It's yeah. true. It's it's hard. I I I can't walk in my yard with my cane because the yard's so uneven. I have to watch where I'm walking. And then after, if I walk around my yard, my shoulder hurts from the cane, from yeah. leaning on the cane, which makes my shoulder really sore. So, and I fell, yes, day before yesterday for the first time in two years, getting out of the salon chair when I got my hair cut because I forgot I can't do two things at once anymore. So I was talking and I tripped and fell. So. It was nobody's fault and I'm fine, but you know, we just tend to forget. Um, it, it's easy to forget even, you know, and I, I know better and I forgot. So, mm -hmm. but I understand it is, it is awkward and there are places I'd like to go that I can't anymore. So, but you know, I've just accepted that because I've chosen to live here. So that's just how it is. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just, no, when I, when I saw the curb. I'm really glad. I think it's great, I mean, great you're doing that. Say, yeah, and I saw the curb cuts I immediately. I was like, okay, when my wife went there, we couldn't do that. My wife went there, we couldn't do that. And that's the reason why I got in this commission because there's a lot of things. I never realized how limited sometimes someone with my wife in an situation was until my wife had the stroke. I'm not going to mm -hmm. lie to you. Prior mm -hmm. to five years ago, that curb cut wasn't on my mind. No, it wouldn't no. have been most people. And now it's always on my mind. Whenever I go someplace and there's a handicapped person, a spot, and someone's not in there, I've almost gotten into. I wouldn't say fist fights, but a heated exchange is stopped up when someone comes in and parks in that spot. Yeah. No, it's yeah. true from, from the yeah, point too, Augie right. has been in wheelchair since he, was, since he was 12 and our whole family, our lives changed because we just started seeing everything from his perspective, which we never had before. And we'd, you know, it, we wanted to go somewhere and, and this is not Scottsdale. <laughs> My kids were born in <laughs> Manhattan. So, but it would be, you know, oh no, you know, is there, you know, a threshold in the front? Can we get in? Ba ba ba. Is there an elevator? And even all the way down to the dining tables, because he can't push in if it's like a dining yeah. table that doesn't have like open legs out to the side. Yeah, if, it, if it has a, a center <laughs> post, we can't even go there. Because I foot rest can't go It, it really is. It's a life changer when you um, see the world through the eyes of someone you love who's struggling. It's tough. Yeah. You know, just um, when it comes down to the sidewalks, that I think in almost every meeting that we have, we talk about the sidewalks issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the town, you, you know, the town is just like doing it piecemeal by piecemeal. And, um, and, and they do, they, they have a big project going on that Mickey will talk about at the end of this meeting, but the sidewalks is everyone's biggest concern, the sidewalks and the lighting. Yeah. 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 Well, what's going to happen with lighting since that lighting bill passed at a town meeting? Then what? Then how does that affect people with abilities that are special? You Say know, that they, again, Rocky, please. Remember at the town meeting, they passed that lighting bill. Yeah. yeah. For the state. So, you know what? As, as I say, didn't think about it, was were people with um, these handicap access, was that even brought up? Yeah. These are the, the night sky people, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. That should still be, that shouldn't um, interfere with creating proper street lighting because they they're they're more concerned about up lighting rather than down lighting which is what we want for good you know street visibility visual yes yeah so um i'm not sure where where were we um so we're, 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 do we need to vote on the new definition 
Yes, thank you, George. I, um, so I'm going to accept a, a, a motion to update our our definition to the to the new definition that I just read. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Jeanette. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, uh, Mary Beth. Aye. Augie. Aye. Rocky. Aye. Jeanette. Aye. Georgia. Aye. And I'm an aye. So that's good. Good. That's good. I like the definition. I do too. Okay, so the bylaws is the next thing, part of that same um, agenda topic. And somewhere I have it. Uh, bylaws. Okay. Did, um, I don't know if you've all looked through this bylaw um, uh, that Brenda sent us. The um, it's the cover sheet. Of course, there is. Okay. You got it, Mickey. I got it. Yep. So it's a fair amount to, to read through, and um, the bylaws that we've adopted are, for the most part, um, a cut and paste from the state's recommended right. bylaws. There's been a right. couple of amendments, a couple of variations, but but very little. Um, substantive changes so i don't know if I, I i think we should just at least open it up and see if anybody has has looked at this and if they have any concerns or want to make any revisions or so i wasn't able to um open it up i was having trouble <clears throat> yesterday on my laptop with the documents and then there was an open as a zip file whatever was happening it wasn't working for me but i will um definitely be happy to take a deep dive into it I, i'm all about reading and editing or at least suggesting <laughs> it so um but i have have not um i i did read through them all and i could see where we copied and what the revisions are what i didn't see was the mention of our facilitator in the bylaws hmm. is there something in there i didn't see it i thought there was I didn't see it. Yeah, it's under um, Article 4 for offices. They talk about a chairperson, a vice chairperson, a secretary. And then um, on 4D, it says the facilitator shall um, keep records of all meetings, attendance, minutes, and correspondence, post notices. Okay, there it is. All right, somehow yep. I just totally skipped, missed that. Yep. Okay, that was, that was the main thing I noticed. I didn't see that listed. Okay. So. Uh, let me see. You know, died, I did something. Yeah. You've got 19 years since it's been updated, right? 2004. Well, we updated yeah. in 2010. It, it was amended in 2010, just so you know. You know, you know, Rocky. Um, just like um, I have a little bit more time to put into commission these days, and so I'm just kind of going through my files, and they're like, "What is all this stuff that we have?" And we should like, you know, like address it as a commission. What do we want to do here? You know, um, let's start with the definition. I have all these like mission statements, goals, all this stuff, and they're like, "Is some of it so antiquated, or like we just have to revisit?" And I figured this is a good way to start revisiting these um, these these documents so well, one, of, one of my questions too was um the town manager yeah uh chooses the uh committee is Correct. that what it was yeah mm -hmm. right. appoints people so yeah. um isn't that a little different than somehow the some of the committees that are run it yeah. is but for whatever reason this is the way the state has set up yeah i saw that the saint did the same thing yeah i was just curious about that they also have a mayor do their stuff instead of town manager, but um, okay. Yeah, I was just curious about that. Um, That's actually a good thing. It's um, it's been, I think it's, to be honest, been beneficial for us. Okay. Uh, in the past, so I'm happy. Okay. I don't argue about that at all, so yeah. just curious. All right. so. Mary Beth said that she would be looking into the um, bylaws um, in the future, but I'm going to assume that so far nobody else has any concerns with them. And if Mary Beth, if you once you've read through them, if you have anything you want to talk about, um, bring it up at a next meeting. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, I can I just I didn't know if like it was worth mentioning our bylaws or even if we can about like um like how we review 
variance requests from all the businesses here on Nantucket or from, um, and that's a big part of what we do and how we support the, um, we send a letter of support or non-support to the architectural access board. But um, we're really very much involved with all the um, new construction, reconstruction of public buildings here on Nantucket. And I didn't know if we wanted that as part of our bylaws. I don't even know if it needs to be in there, but there was, in like we have the ramps. Um, we, you know, deliver ramps to everyone that requests them that I can ramp their house. And- um, oh, we and don't, you do. Yes. Yeah, we, I, know, I know, I know, but I'm just saying, I don't know if that should be included or not, you know, cause this is what we kind of do personally here on Nantucket, maybe more than, other commissions do, you know, throughout the state, right? So, Brenda, that's it's probably under Article Two, Powers and Duties, um, and I think that you're bringing up some good some good points, and you know, maybe instead of trying to rewrite it right here, why yeah. don't we um, come up with a few additions to Article Two? Okay, which could probably include the ramps and, and the review of those. Um, it could also include um, providing. Uh, you know, accessible parking space permits, you know, to the local population. So that's probably not listed here either. So we could, yeah. um, why don't we come up with some suggestions on what, how to modify article two. Um, I'll suggest that Mary Beth be the point person on that. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Don't ever open your mouth, Mary. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't care. Re reading and writing is what I do. So, Good. so why don't you work with Brenda, and I'll I'll be involved, too, of course. But um, let's let's come up with some ideas and um, and present it at the next meeting. Sure. Sounds good. Yep. Great. All right. Back to the agenda. Okay. Um. So next on the agenda is the Mass Office on Disability Municipal Grant. Oh yeah. So uh, Brenda, I'm gonna let you jump into that one and describe sure. what we got here. So the Mass Office on Disability um, is once again, um, supplying grants for municipals to either remove barriers all on town property or to create access. So what we've done in the past, okay, um, when our previous DPW director was involved, we did get one of the projects done and it was with um, um, making the boardwalks for the Galley Beach, the boardwalk for Jetty's Beach with the landing that uh, at the end of it and the ramp that was um, at Children's Beach and that nice landing at Children's Beach. So th that was one thing that we did with, we got a grant for that. And we also got a grant for um, updating our, what do they call it, Mickey, transition? Of the transition plan? The transition plan, uh, like how we're, like Nantucket's transition plan. So on accessibility. So, um, so they offer it every year. And so now you have to have the grant and, and they actually will um, give up to $250,000 to certain municipalities for um, <coughs> in this grant. Last time we got, I think $90,000 for the ramps and then another $35,000 for the um, transitional plan. So it's pretty good. So now we're, um, coming up to, they, they're offering a new grant. And I have to work with the DPW on this. So the DPW has to be on board 100% of what, what we're off, offering. Mm -hmm. um, these are things that I came up with. And I'm not saying that the only things that we can do, if you guys have an, other ideas of like where we could apply, where we could apply for grant money that is important to you, I think it's great. These are just suggestions that I came up with. Um, Augie often mentions the curb cuts, the crosswalk right there at um, on Broad Street, right at the corner table. Yeah, he was crosswalk. talking he, this again today. I called and the I Augie crosswalk. Sure there's a, so there's a crosswalk, it? but there's no curb cuts. Right. Yes, and so um, I was thinking maybe we could apply to get those curb cuts put in with this grant, right? And mm -hmm. but things at the town, it's not on the town's radar right now, and that's one of them. Okay. And then um, there's like at Marine Home Center, 
they have a crosswalk there, but they have no curb cuts there. Now, the sidewalk isn't, is, sidewalk is rather shallow. I'll give it that, but I'm not an engineer, but I'm just figuring that some kind of a curb cut can be put in there and still have safe access on the sidewalk. So I was thinking that is a highly utilized <clears throat> crosswalk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then if you go down a little bit further on Orange Street, the landmark house, there's two crosswalks actually on each end of the landmark house. And there's two crosswalks and neither one of them have curb cuts on it. So I thought those would be two really great places to have curb cuts. I mean, you're at the landmark house and, um, and the, at one end of the landmark house is a bus stop. And it's just like, it's a, it's, um, it's very pedestrian friendly. And I just thought those would be great places for a curb cut. And yeah, um, yesterday when I was walking from the town building to the Salt Marsh Center, that's where I work out of um, Rocky is at Salt Marsh Center. I have a I have a desk here. Right? I'm not saying I have an office because that is a multi-use room, and I'm okay with that. I just need I just need an area, and I love working there. Um, I was going by the Mariah Mitchell Aquarium, and he had, this family's coming out with a baby carriage and a and a toddler. It was a mother. It was it looked as if it was two parents. Now they're coming out of Mariah Mitchell and it was a cloudy day on Nantucket and traffic going on both ways on Washington Street is crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And so now they come out and they're like, how are we supposed to cross this street? You know, it, it, just no crosswalk, no curb cut. So, and there's no sidewalk on the Mariah Mitchell side. And so now they're going over the, over the, um, over the grass and everything. And then there is like a little bit of a lane. They actually have to come out into the street in order to get to the crosswalk down there by Commercial Street and Coffin Street. And they're like, this is, a and across the street from Mariah Mitchell is a day camp. And so now you've got the two camp councils coming out. They got a parade of kids and they're taking them across the street with no crosswalk. It was just like, and they're like, this is just crazy to me. Okay, so I was, those are the four places that I thought we could have crosswalks and curb cuts. Now, this grant can be used for anything. It can be used for a new elevator. If we needed an elevator, it can be used for anything to break barriers or create access. Is that it is. only for public spaces? or It's for t municipality spaces. Meaning so like town-owned? Town town-owned huh? town town property. Okay. Town-owned property. And that can be like even like, you know, um, it could be like maybe even the recreational fields that... I mean, Tom Nevis, that's got a, a ton of stuff that needs to be done, but anything that's owned by the town that either creates <laughs> access or removes barrier is considered, um, is considered um, to be, can be put into this grant. So if anybody has anything else they would like to do, I mean, at least I could research it. I could see if the DPW is on board, if they have the time to do it, you know, but oh, this uh, is what I came up with. Wait, what, what? I, I have a question that may be stupid, but where is the crosswalk in front of Marine Home Center? People oh. cross there all the time, but I've never noticed a, a crosswalk. Almost like directly across from where the appliance center, you know how they have the appliance I, I've center? Never, I have never noticed the lines yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, it's a crosswalk there for sure. People cross there all the time and, you know, yeah. that's great. But it, it leads, the crosswalk leads you right into the park, I know where, like into yeah. the main entrance. to Because I go that way all the time. That's how I, yeah. that's where I go all the time. Yeah. But I never noticed anybody on the crosswalk. They're just, anyway. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll look more carefully. I'll That's the only way I across the streets is on those big white yeah. lines. Okay. Um, Brenda? <clears throat> Brenda? I'm listening. Um, somebody that goes to the galley restaurant, or not galley restaurant, but the Gaza, Gaza Strip, they're complaining about the boardwalk. It's shorter this year. I have not been this year at all to the beach for there. And they want, it, want to know why. And it, they don't really seem to take care of it. The sand is too, you know, whatever. So lumpy or un uneven, I guess I should say. So uh, I heard you mention the galley. And so I don't know if that was part of it. I can look at that, Jeanette. Yeah. It, it they said it took the they took a whole big portion of it off this year so consequently and it's a lot of friends my age that are walking in the sand and they have difficulty walking and all <laughs> so okay thank you yeah that's one that literally ought to go as close to the water as possible mm -hmm. right. yes. a lot of elderly people use that and the closer we can get them the better yeah so true 
Yeah. Um, and, it, and one other thing, they say they don't put it down soon enough in the whole season. They'll probably take it up too early in the later season. One thing about the crosswalks at the Landmark House, um, where my father lives is at 145 Orange Street. So if you're coming down Orange Street and you turn up to Dave Street where the box is, right? You go a little further, there's a um, nurse stop right there, right? Mm -hmm. one, you're talking about um, a crosswalk. Well, Tucker Holland approached me and said they bought that land right where the, yep. um, as you go up Dave Street to the right of it. Yep. And they're going to move that shuttle stop to the other side of Dave Street mm. where the housing is going to be. So you might be able to get them to put the crosswalk and curb appeal that you're looking for without having to use your money on that. Okay. Good idea. So yep. say that again, Mark, what they're doing? Okay. So you know if you go down Dave Street, that that Nerdist stop? <laughs> yep. That's right, right after Dave Street? Yep. 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 So housing Nantucket, Bought Matt Fee's right. land, which is as you turn up Dave Street, it's to the right, but butts yep. up against the lumber. So yep. <laughs> I was in a school community meeting, and he came to us, we bought that property. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to move that shell stop in front of your father's house because they camp out on, on the hill where he lives and they've garbage in, in, his, in his yard. So they're going to move that to the other side of Dave Street. So once they put the shuttle stop there, they're going to have to put some sort of access, right? So maybe they can just put the access there and on the other side of the street. <laughs> well, they've already got a shuttle stop down the road without any access to it. But um, I think when they do that work is a good time to suggest that they, they do this work too. So yeah. it's good to know not to, it's good to know that it's gonna get moved. So there's no point in putting one in where they're gonna move it from, so. I'm gonna look at that. It's at 145 arms, right? They could be, it could be five years down the road too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Landmark is 144. Right. Right. Are there anything else um, that, in, in this is rather time sensitive, this, um, this grant, because it has to be completed by September 15th. And, um, is there anything else that you could think of that that's important to you right now that you would like for me to see if we can apply yeah, can I say for? something? Go for it. Um, so, so I went, so I haven't been in tap room for a while, but the last time that I went there, uh, the door, the door that closes for the elevator. Oh, but that's the, private the, property. All right. Yeah. Properties. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about like um, things owned by town, but if, but it, it, well, the point is, the point is the door wasn't closing that well because it was rusted. The hinge was. Okay. So that was not, this might not be for a grant, but okay. so he's saying the door in the tap room, the, for, for the, for the elevator, for because, the lift. Okay. Is, because the elevator, because the door needs to shut all the way for it to work, for it to work. And, it was hard closing the door. Like we had closed the door barely, you know, because it wasn't closing by itself because it was rusted. It's rusted. Yeah, the hinges. So tap room, elevator. Yep. Damage. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Good. Good. I mean, I don't know if they fix it yet because they haven't been inside. Last time that I went there, I was, you know, I was outside sitting on the patio, so I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Did you mention it to the Maggie? When you were there? Um, no, I haven't mentioned it to them yet. Yeah. Well, we can do that, Brenda, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I haven't been down in the stop and shop area in Main Street. It was very poorly lit the last time. I, was there. <laughs> I don't know if they've improved that or not. So uh, that would be something I would like you to look at. And, and probably right in the parking lot, they should add a few more lights or something. That's private property, um, the parking lot, right? Okay, yeah. I think, I think yeah, that, that wouldn't be part of the grant, but I think that, is that owned by um, COP? NIR, I think, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah because actually, I thought about it. I was there the other night with two women, and we had our flashlights going <laughs> and stuff to see, to walk through that lot. 
you know, there's a lot of places downtown that need lighting improvements. That's for sure. Yes. There are. There's a lot. Mm -hmm. yep. Is there is there um an a lot is there an allotted number of handicapped spaces that are required for the NIR parking lot? Because it seems to me that there's not enough handicap accessible parking spaces. Is there yeah. a number? Yes, is there, there is. So there's a formula for like all private and public parking lots. Um, it's uh, um, the Architectural Access Board, who is the um, the, the uh, body mm -hmm. in uh, in Massachusetts for the rules and regulations for accessibility. So we call it the AAB. Now, so if a parking lot has 15 spaces, you require one accessible parking space, and it must be van accessible. Mm -hmm. 25 spaces triggers two, 50 spaces triggers three. So it, it depends on the number of parking spaces that's in the parking lot. And then a proportion of those parking spaces have to be accessible parking spaces. I can send you that information marking. And I, I think, <laughs> I mean, I haven't looked at the shopping shop lately, um, but I do, you know, um, I thought they were in compliance for the number of spaces that they did have. Um, but I can send you the information just so you'll have it too, so you'll know. And oh, I'd um, love to go down there with a clicker. <laughs> you go right down there with a clicker. I'm sending you this information. Maybe and, you and I can do that together, Augie. What do you think? Go down there with a clicker and cut them some parking. <laughs> Augie and I have terrorized people before. Bartlett's used to be our um, terror venue of choice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. people, you know, with the expired uh, placards. Yeah, I know. Um, we've called the police a couple of times. That was back pre-COVID. Yeah. But yeah, Augie would be game. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you know, there's a um, there's a um, a police officer, officer <laughs> that goes downtown here. He does a great job with the accessible parking spaces. He's actually confiscated some park um, an accessible parking, um, a temporary accessible parking. Um, pocket from someone that was abusing him and yeah. then this person came to me to see if we would issue them a temporary one and I said well you can go to the police department because we only issued them for six months or greater and he said well the police confiscating give me this story and said, this just doesn't sound right to me you know so I called the police okay. department and then I remembered officer Mac called me about this and I said take it Check the permit office, Mac. He says, you know, this is not an issue to this person that's using it. So he took it. And then it was like, all came back to me a couple of weeks later. And they're like, oh, this really sounds familiar. So when I talked to um, Ann Cimitaro at the police department at the permitting, <laughs> I said, she told, I said, Ann, I realized what, you know, um, why the officer Mac confiscated. And I says, and this person will not get an accessible parking um Pocket from us, a temporary one. So we want you to know that we support what the police department is doing to help with the accessible parking spaces. But he does do a good job. That's good. good. He really does. He can't be everywhere all the time, but I'm telling you, he's on it. Very good. Yeah. So the, the only addition, Brenda, that I might think of myself is that one we've already talked about down at the, um, the building department. Is this for the grant? Yes. Yes, exactly. You know, we've talked about it. It's a, it's complicated, and I can't remember. We'll have to go back and look at it again to see how how much sense this makes. <laughs> but that was another one <clears throat> that could potentially go on this list to get a you know an accessible parking spot and a ramp to get into the front of you know the um, plus office on Fairgrounds Road. They have a ramp, Nikki. In that front, that front. Uh, <laughs> Is ramped. They don't have the accessible parking space in the front parking lot, and the accessible parking spaces are a mess in the back parking lot, right? Right. So if they move the accessible parking space to the front of the building where it really yeah. should be, yeah. they'll have to put in a new curb cut and a ramp Correct. to access that. Correct. Right. Mickey, Mickey's up in Vermont right now, but he'll be back on Sunday, and we're going to be together on Monday afternoon, Mickey? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And maybe we can look at it then. We could do that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good enough. All right. Sounds good. Good. Okay. <clears throat> so just, just a question, Brenda, that grant, 
is that a matching grant or is it a? It doesn't have to be a matching grant anymore. Before it wasn't <clears throat> even a matching grant. It was like the the town had put up so much money, um, like and um. But now I think I read it the other day when I reviewed it that they don't even require the town to have any upfront money in it. So it's oh. not even a matching grant. Even better, good. And so the yeah, it'd be great. Like we. We applied for it a couple of times to um, member out at Surfside to do a deck out at Surfside, Nikki, and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. the application wasn't as good as it could have been. Mm -hmm. Not my, not my problem. That was not my problem. Just put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> we knew my, that. Thank my, God. My, my Thank God. It was not perfect. my problem. <laughs> no, my part of the application was perfect. I'm just going to say. So you know. Of course it was. We love you, Brenda. Yeah, I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. so, anyway. Okay, moving on. So I think that covers the municipal yeah. grant, right? Yeah. All right. So now we have old business, and I'm not sure. Do we have any old business? I don't think so. And then we have other business, which includes an update. Yeah. So Brenda, update. Uh, do you want to take that? How about that? How about when we walked around the town, all the the engineers in the town, everyone in the town, Mickey, about the um, the sidewalk um, survey that we. So I'll with. start. I'll start with that. And this was a while ago. This was probably in in May sometime, I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the town contacted Brenda and I, which is a good thing because they were doing a kind of a a large group meeting. Um, related to the sewer work and the down up by the um, pumping station going up um, step lane um, and down, you know, various streets, Center Street and North Water Street, that whole area. I think we, so we, the route was from the pumping station up to North Water, jog over to <laughs> Step Lane, or maybe it's straight across to Step Lane, up and then down Center Street. And then eventually the, the sewer line will go out Lily Street, but we stopped our tour right there at the base of Lily Street. And what they're- yeah, went down a little bit further, Mickey, just past American Seasons, remember? Yeah, we, we did. We ended up, even though they're not doing much work down there, we ended up talking more about that section too. But um, so what the purpose of the meeting was, was to get all these groups together to, to when they put the sidewalks back and they've temporarily done that in some cases just with asking. <laughs> But they're they're at some point going to rebrick the sidewalks and in fact improve a lot of situations. So they got um, they got Holly Backus from the uh, preservation office and the HTC and and Brenda and me, um, a couple of DPW people. Libby Gibson was there. Um, David Gray from the sewer department, of course, and a couple of engineers that were working on the project and probably other people I'm forgetting. Mo from the DPW. Mm -hmm. Um, so we all walked together and, and at each section we discussed, you know, <clears throat> this is how it was. These were some problems with it before. This is how, when we put it back, we can improve it to make it better. We talked a lot about curb cuts and surface material and crosswalks. Um, and it was a, it was a really good meeting and that they, they were very open to, you know, even though the contract had already been written and they'd already been doing a lot of the work. They they knew that there was going to be some amendments to it, so we we were amending it. Um, you know, it hasn't been approved, but we were adding to the list of amendments as we went along. So it was encouraging, first of all, just to be included in that conversation because they're obviously thinking of um, accessibility when they're redoing these sidewalks, and um, they were very receptive. They listened to a lot of the stuff that we added. And, and I think that it's, you know, in the long run, it's going to be a real positive, um, at least along the route of the sewer, it'll be a real positive for Nantucket sidewalks. Hmm. Uh, Great. And I guess, I don't know when they're actually going to do that work, but I imagine they'll be continuing digging up the streets <laughs> this coming fall. So who knows? I'm not sure what the schedule is. I have another thing, Mickey and everybody, is that I was down to Children's Beach this morning for coffee. And while I was waiting for my friends to come, I was walking around. And the tar there, they've got big, like if there's a root of a tree or something, I don't know what it is. And it would not be, I mean, it's, it's not very safe for somebody who is 
kind of handicapped or sight impaired. So I don't know if that's anything that we can get on our list or not. Okay. We, we certainly can, but Jeanette, which sidewalk are you talking about? You you come, you park to go to the, the food place. <laughs> yeah. and I was walking all around that section. Around the grass lawn? Around the grass lawns. Yes. On the asphalt? Pardon me? Is it asphalt? Yes, it's tar, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. Okay. So wanted to update you on that sidewalk survey. Um, next Monday, Brenda and I are doing a similar walk with the DPW, probably the same group on Pleasant Street because they're doing a different sidewalk project. Um, starting, we're meeting at Silver Street parking lot. Um, it goes from it goes from Main Street to Five Corners, Mickey, on Pleasant Street. Okay, so that's that's it's all of Pleasant Street to Five Corners. Yeah, yeah. From Main Street, so we'll be doing a similar walk along there. Um, it doesn't include that section going from Five Corners down toward the Stop and Shop, where there literally is no sidewalk. That would be <laughs> nice if that, if that was included. But I think this is a for whatever reason this is a different project future project i'm not sure when this is happening but again they're looking for information as they do their their um, long-term planning so it's another positive um well we're losing a lot of walking lanes to cars parking in your lane on the side of the road here in that in hummock pond road everybody parks on the on their like your lawn or the extension of your lawn on hummock pond road it's by yeah. your house? Mm -hmm. and, and further down and going down mm -hmm. to Meadowview, there's always cars. And I just saw today I was walking back from one of my family's homes and there was a landscaper with a big, you know, holder mm -hmm. on there and stuff. And, you know, mm -hmm. so I don't know. We can't. I know that we have way too many cars on island and I know Matt B has been for years wanting to get rid of them. But I'm beginning to think that we need to have more enforcement. Well, what we need is more sidewalks in residential neighborhoods. Right. Yes. And you don't have any around your house. Um, no. So you need to walk on the shoulder. Right. And, and I always face the traffic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, probably it's a different spot, issue. But it's, 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 still, in. it's, it's a tough it's, spot where you are to yes. walk. Yes. It's really yeah. dangerous there. Yeah. Well, that um, you know, I don't know, I don't know how we bring that up, but that's probably a whole different um, thing. I think so. You know, the yeah. project that they need to do. I Big walk project. in the cemetery, but get down there safely. <laughs> There's no cars <laughs> or traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Four people. <laughs> um. Okay. So, the sidewalk. All right, Brenda. I'm going to let you take take it from here. There's a few other updates that Brenda has been working on. Yeah. Um, okay. So the Commission on Disability, we we lobbied for four accessible taxis and we had four accessible taxis at one point. Now we are down to one accessible taxi. Casey. Oh, that guy that Augie and I met? Yes, exactly. Oh, that's it. Okay. That's it. Oh, that's and, um, Pardon me? Yeah, but that's too bad. But the good part is that um, I've been working with Ann Simmentaro, I think that's how you pronounce the last name, at the permitting department, and how to go about getting, the how we went about getting um, accessible taxi drivers um, to want to buy an accessible taxi is that they would send out a letter to everybody on the taxi waiting list. And they said, okay, so we are looking for three accessible, new accessible taxis on the island. Would you be willing to purchase an accessible taxi? Even if you're last on the list, you know, say, let's say like you're looking for three licenses, five people respond. The first three with the most seniority would be offered the license. So they actually have three people that are interested in the accessible taxi license, which would bring wow. us back to four. And which I think would be great. They're all looking into getting an accessible taxi vehicle because they're going to have the vehicle if they're going to accept this this license. So it'd be really great if this all comes about because then we'll have four accessible taxis on the island versus just one. So that's kind of like 
I was a little concerned initially because I didn't know if people would be interested in it, in it, but obviously there's some interest out there. They updated me just maybe about a week ago that three people were interested in the accessible taxi licenses, which is great. So hopefully they'll get that one. And if we, we get it like on our website, on our webpage now on the town's webpage, we have only the one accessible taxi. I've updated that to just be KCK taxi and I'm in the visitor service center knows it and um, and the chamber knows it. So hopefully I can update them that we're gonna have four accessible taxis one day, so. And those those people who are applying for that will then get um, their license immediately if they get the exactly. right. Exactly, regardless of their position Good on incentive. the taxi waiting list, um, yeah. they will get, they will, um, get the license. Right. Yeah. That list still exists? You gotta be kidding me. No, it totally does. Come on. Seriously. Wow. Yeah. Back before back before Uber and then Lyft and all that, people used to fight over that getting on that oh, list. Oh yeah. People still right? want to be on that list because I think they found that marriage between Uber, Lyft, and the taxis, right? And um yeah, it's amazing that three people do want the successful taxi license. Yeah. That list is very much alive. <laughs> oh, yep and so um so that's good news right and um yep yep and then um and then um i had so we, we have a budget the commission on disability and it's like it's like 1685 dollars or something last year i think i spent 1800 dollars, which the town totally covered the extra couple hundred dollars and but i did put the report together of what i spent it on and i meant to send it out i just finished it this morning when i was at work and so we spent like 1500 some odd dollars on, it was on ramps. We bought a lot of ramps this year. So Rocky, one thing that we do is, I don't know if you like, I have, I think we have like four 10 foot ramps an eight foot ramp, a bunch of five foot ramps, four foot ramps and three foot ramps. And let's just say if somebody comes to visit the island and they need a ramp, they're in a wheelchair or whatever. And um, there's only a couple of steps to go up onto the porch and then another step into the house. We can get them into the house. And it's really a really um, vibrant program. We we do a lot of ramp deliveries and we also do it for like people coming but it's out you, of the it's you, it's you. you yes. I know, it's you, it's you. Stop that's saying we. Me, I know, it's, it's Brenda. God, she's no, loving I know, but I'm doing it for the commission. I mean, I'm just doing it for, you know, for well, the commission. Thank you. You know, your commission of one on that, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what was that? Been your great. commission of one on the ramps. Yeah. She, and she yep. weighs about 10 pounds, so our yeah. does it. No, so it's just, uh, it's um really been great. So, we, um, so just even if, like, earlier this year, it's just uh, like the ramps, even in the wintertime and the springtime, are like, like people coming out of the hospital, people come in the off season, it, it, and more people know about the ramps. So every year, it just, a program just seems to grow a little bit more. So we spent a lot of money on ramps. We spent them, um, I'll just give you ramps, um, the Chamber of Commerce dues, and I think envelopes, um, business envelopes. And I think that was our budget for $1,500. So, but I'll send that out to you the next time I'm in the office. So you, so everyone's aware of what we're spending. It's like <laughs> transparent. Did you give yourself a good raise? I was going to say, who gives you a raise? Don't forget those <laughs> envelopes on that itemized list now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, so that's really about it. Uh, you know, just like everyday life, it, uh, it's always busy. Like, you know, people calling for different stuff and just addressing stuff. And it's all really good. I got a great place to work out at the Saltmar Center. I love it. I love working with, La uh, you know, not that I am. Uh, I love Laura. I love Ginny. And, you know, I just love being down there. I have my own little space. I close the door because it's so loud there. I never, <laughs> I never knew how vibrant the Saltmar Center was until I started working down there. So, um, so yeah, everything's really good. You know, and Were you there the other day when that man was playing his guitar? No. Tuesday, it was? I was there Monday and Wednesday and today. Yeah, so I wasn't okay. there Tuesday. Yeah. He's yeah. a nice young man. He's a junior in high school, I think. Or he played some few songs, all different varieties. Nice. Nice. Great. In the afternoon. Uh, All right. So I've okay. lost my agenda. Um, what do we have anything else on the agenda? I wasn't in it. I don't think so. Last thing is to adjourn open session. Yeah.
Okay. Um, Brenda, do we have anything else to cover? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, one more thing. So um, <laughs> if you read the minutes, the minutes was all about Jessica Simmons presenting. Um, uh, yep. she's, she's the independent living program manager at CORD, which is Cape Organization of the Rights oh, right. of the Peoples. Yeah. And so I am going on reaching out to her because they don't service the island and they say they're Cape in the islands. And so I'm going to reach out to her and just see how we can get them the to reach out to, to Nantucket and how we can get CORD involved with Nantucket and Nantucket involved with CORD. And that might be a little bit of a process, but that is totally on my the top of my to-do list is to um, reach out to her. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. right that was a good program, yeah. Yeah. They offer a lot of <laughs> services, and, uh, you know, even if they have to do remote services for, mm -hmm. you know, meetings with the Antarctic, I mean, we should be aware of this stuff, and they should they should really make themselves, um, they should have a presence here on Nantucket. In my right. Yeah, I mean, not for nothing, especially if they're saying they serve the Cape and Islands. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You're gonna tell me it's two islands, not just the vineyard. This woman, this <laughs> yeah, woman for literally, I think <laughs> she right. thought somehow Nantucket was like part of Martha's Vineyard. I'm just remembering from that whole meeting. She, yeah. yeah. Oh yep. yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I think she didn't. Um, we had to tell her that Martha's Vineyard was Duke's County. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a new issue. That's an old issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Cape and Islands, except it doesn't include the islands. So mm -hmm. <laughs> they all like the title. So anyway, so um, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. how they um, what we can what we can make happen here on Nantucket. I think it'd be a really great problem for us. Mm -hmm. Good, great. All right, anybody else? Again. All right. Um, so okay. I, that covers the agenda. And if nobody else has anything else. That they want to talk about at this meeting, I think we can adjourn. Okay. I want to ask you a question, Mickey. Sure. Are you still on the safety uh, commission? The traffic safety committee, the traffic yes. Safety. What can we do about cars parking on Eastern Street? Uh, there were two on <laughs> each side, one coming, one going, bicycles and uh, runners. It was a disaster. What? How can we get that? Are you talking about Easton close to the to the hotel or down by Brandon? Yeah, close to the hotel. The hotel. And that's in another month or so it should get better. That I know, just but came I, up. I already had an accident there. Yeah. Well, that it's came nasty. up at our meeting today. We met this morning. And somebody has suggested, I think it was um McKechnie at the um travel at the uh, real estate mm -hmm. office. Uh, um and he was suggesting that we either widen Easton Street, um, which I think was his suggestion. And the other th concept was to eliminate parking on one side. Oh, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> just a lot of spaces. Nobody wants to lose parking. And so, nobody nobody no. any give. They're all coming oh. at you once and it's just terrible. So it's, I mean that's just my own little beef. <laughs> well, it's it's not just your beef. There's a lot of people that are concerned about that area, and it's it, to some degree it's a, it's a safety issue if the ambulances can't get through or the fire trucks, things like that. Yeah. Well, so. I have know somebody who ha was in an ambulance, uh, right? You know, driving the ambulance, and this car where they had their horns going and stuff, they pulled right in front of them, and then they decided to go back the other way, and then <laughs> a, one of the fire trucks got hit by somebody. You know, yeah. just. <clears throat> I'm thinking, so they don't, fire engines don't mean anything to anybody. Well, you know, it's an issue that's, that's you know, it's it's out there. It's not like it's, it's um no it's an undiscovered issue. It's, it's, people are thinking about it. I'm not sure what the solution is, if there really is a good solution. Stop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I know I'm going to be crucified for that one. The, um, the hey, other issue did, that. What did you say? Stop <laughs> signs. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember when we were going down that road. We almost got into a head-on collision because there was this pickup truck turning around the corner, and we almost crashed into it. Yeah. Well, or else you have to play chicken. Yeah. You know who's right. gonna? Yeah. And yeah. This when, and this is when we were heading down, like up the cliff uh, road. Like we're going right at the stop sign, and a truck coming around the corner. We had to 
like stopped short because he wouldn't crash into us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of my grandchildren who's learned to drive recently says driving here is like driving on an obstacle course. Yeah, um, it, it is. You know, the bikers, they're all going the wrong way down the yeah, road. Yeah. And the cars going the wrong way. The people walking in front of the cars and the cars. Yeah. And said, yeah, if you could drive here, you could probably drive anywhere on earth. <laughs> I guess I can't drive here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> The um, the other the other situation that came up today, traffic safety, was Gardner Street, which has a very similar. Um, even though there's no parking, yeah. down there, it's a really. Oh, I, I haven't street. gone to Gardner Street since pandemic. Yeah, most, I just I haven't been there. This time of year, I think most people try to avoid it because it's so busy, yeah. and and you've got to drive on the yeah. sidewalk at times. So, and there's no real good use to that either, except to make it one way. And I don't think anybody really does want to make that one way. It creates no. other issues. That would be huge issues. Yeah. yeah. I still think they should put a line down the middle, which nobody wants to do because it is very limited because you don't have to drive on the sidewalk most of the time. But people don't suggestion. see that and they do it. Yeah. That's a good suggestion, Georgia. And I thought of that, but it, it, it never really came up and I didn't think of it at the time. Yeah. I brought it up before and nobody wanted to do it, so... I asked Jack Gardner years ago. So mm -hmm. anyway, long time ago. Mm -hmm. yep. no, no. <clears throat> okay. Any other topics? No, thank you. Any none? No. Not none at other? this moment, but they could come up any hour. So <laughs> we'll save them. Well, let us know. So yeah. I'm going to, I guess we'll have a motion to, to adjourn. I'll uh, make that motion. Seconded by Georgia. Okay whatever all of us yeah. <laughs> so all those in favor we can do a voice vote all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. all right thanks everyone thanks thank everybody you. thanks thank Brenda. You. good all luck good. god bless I'll keep in touch bye. bye i have to ask where's bye -bye. the wicked accent from brenda dorchester <laughs> good god that is strong <laughs> <laughs> you got a wicked Tessa accent, kid. Thank you, Rocky. Uh, I appreciate that. I love a man that loves my accent. Huh? <laughs> Good Lord. My husband, what a central, my husband, what my husband a central casting on that. <laughs> I have this from Rochester, too. Okay. Both of us. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Nice to see you all. See okay. you, Augie. Bye, all. Bye. See you all. Right. Thank Take you. Care. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. That's not okay. Yeah.